Hey, we're here. Right, well, there's no mouse in my pocket, so it's just me. Um, checking out Control X and Node Red. And what I have attempted to do is simulate like a, a bag house uh, with a timer. And um, what it does, if you picture um, the way a bag house works, you'll have dirty air coming in. And you'll have some kind of generator, right? And then you'll have um, a dirty suction with the bags, and the air goes across, and then it goes like out that way, you know, like in and out across the bags. You'll have a, a timer cord, and um, and you'll read the differential pressure from the the clean and the and the dirty. And based on that differential pressure, you'll do a timer. And uh, if the pressure goes too high, then that's when it will knock the bags. <clears throat> and then the bags will, you know, all the debris will get knocked off of it, go to the bottom where the um, hopper is, if you would. Um, and then it'll keep doing its thing until you get like a leak in your bag or um, you know because there's a happy medium you can hit the bags too many times um, you cannot clean them enough you can get them insecure and a whole bunch of stuff going on um, but most of the time you want to be able to check the process like on a check the differential pressure um, for a DCS or whatnot. And, uh, and then you'll have some kind of timing card that will do, um, that will bump the bags is what I call it. But um, anyway, this is kind of sped up this cycle. Obviously it wouldn't be this fast um, if you were in real life, but it kind of gives you an idea of uh, maybe an application um, for node red and uh, a small PLC or, you know, bringing it off of a timing card and using it for a screen on your uh, DCS or whatnot. So, and then this is just a manual button that I made up so I can toggle it myself if it goes too high. Um, there's a little bit of sequencing there because the toggle button goes um, it'll go true and then it'll stay true, right, on this on this right. So part of this exercise was to check out um, the difference between reading. Uh, this is a read command for control X. And this is a write. Um, and just to go back up here. So this is a data layer request. Um, actually, this is a data layer request here. This is a subscribe. So here I'm just reading from the control X IPC and putting that on display, um, putting that value on display. Here I am writing from the I'm simulating so it's all on my computer um, looking at the local host writing and if you check it out we go down through the data layer to the application sim symbol PLC program and then I'm pulling up my uh, boolean for triggering the solenoids the um, I was trying to get these so that they don't show up because that is a, um, to me, this is um, just to give you an idea. The, uh, yeah, you know, the, like these are function blocks, so you don't necessarily need to see them at a higher level. And to me, that's a security issue. Um, and what I mean by that is in the PLC, you should be able to set your symbols. And I've played around with it, but it's not quite right. Like this one is coming in. Um, 
but on the maximal, on the read write, you see those little arrows. Uh, this one's read, this one's read write. And then these, I mean, maybe I have to change that one. Because in my mind, well, I also know that if I uncheck these and uh, da, 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 let's download that. Probably could have just done an online change, but we'll make it all exciting. So I downloaded, hard download, so it stopped the PLC process. Now it's going to start it back up again. Um, if we go and look, let's see if it took it away. We'll refresh this. Yeah, so it took it away. So it. So that's the way you, you can limit um, how far, like, if you're ISA 95 type person, um, how far, like, a level 2 or, or level 3 type application can drill down into your level 1 uh, application for out in the field. So I bring that up because of OT security, um, where... Node red resides as far as you know data and display, it shouldn't necessarily be able to get to everything in your PLC unless you explicitly say that it can. Um, and the reason you should be cognizant of that is, is strictly security and who may or may not be on your network. The um, because one thing that the, the IPC type environment will allow you to do. Is, is have that kind of um, modularity um, capacity to be able to get as creative as you want to. But with that in mind, you don't want to, you know, throw the kitchen sink at it because then you're opening up everything. Um, so you need to think about it. So with this request node, if we get back to that, um, you have all of these options. And, you know, metadata is another thing that you might think of in security. And then reading with an argument, and then the message method for JSON. So I haven't gone through all those yet. Those are just things to keep in mind when you're working with Control X as far as the uh, creativity that you can do. Um, in this case, it was just a simple write. And then one thing to understand is the value plus type for the JSON. Um, I was unable to use just value to get the Boolean type in. So it was looking for um, uh, here we go. So for the payload it was looking for the type Boolean 8 and the value to be true. And that is the only way that I got it to write properly and that is actually right here if you go look at the, the github notes for Bosch Rexroth um, and this was the error that I was getting the uh, DL type mismatch and it'll tell you that you know that the control X is having an issue um, with, you'll see this come up on node red. Well, <laughs> it's not really that the controller X has an issue, it's that we're not giving it all the information that it wants based on the DL type. Um, so we have to understand um, the registers and how we're typing between node red and the PLC. And as soon as I followed their description here, it worked just fine. Um, and of course there's some extra stuff that you can do to make it you know, more fail proof uh, for those people that are building no node red and, and the open PLCs there's, there's more things that you can do to make it fail proof um, and basically you know the beauty of this is you can be as explicit as you need to be um, uh, now I got too many things up. Let me get back to this. Anyway, all right. So with that in mind, 
Node Red will not see it, see any of your registers, unless you go to the symbol configuration and install it. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. And then um, another thing as far as security is what I was talking about is my function blocks. Um, for instance, I'm generating a random number for my values just to, you know, just to have it act like a real system. Um, so I made up these function blocks for generating a random number for the um, pressure reading for an analog input. That would be different on a real system. You would just, you know, bring in your analog input device um, and monitor it and then make whatever decisions that you want to off of it. Um, for differential pressure, I created a I forget the difference what the M is and the action um, here. Let's just this little method. So method is like a local function block, so it acts the same way, and I can have an output from it. Um, and it works really cool because then you know if I had five of them that I wanted to read differential pressure off of, I can repeat that. Um, object and I don't have to rewrite it every time um, and that's the other thing if you keep your calculations and your manipulations you know this is at a lower level so the PLC program is here um, right now this is more like a higher level for the action and the the calculation is down below so Again, if you get in the habit of programming in such a way that people can't get to your calculations and your PNIs and the the uh, yeah the meat and potatoes of the control, if you hide it below or or above, however you look at it in the stack with the functions, then you can protect yourself even if somebody got on the PLC. So that's and then also it's just repeatability and modularity for good programming practice um, which is code sys oriented uh, for people that aren't familiar with code sys and this is a code sys platform so there's quite a bit that you can do and libraries are extensive so I'm using the systime get ms to generate my random number um, and then it allows me to you know, create this kind of environment or this kind of screen so that you can see some cyclic analog type functionality. Um, which I think is pretty cool. It's a neat little attribute. And um, there's obviously a lot more you can do. All I'm doing is playing around with digitals and um, reels and making it happen so um, just to give you an idea there's the virtual core and my engineering tools so you would put your IO here and then drives you could also display drives um, some other understanding is the devices in here but this is the actual control works this is not the IPC simulator so if I go back out to the IPC simulator, PLC engineering, um, and it's going to make me log in. I've just got the default password. Not ethical. All right. So normally I can have a boot application there. Oh, there it goes. The uh, anyway, as you can see, you know, test one dot project. Um, I'm building my project offline and then I'm downloading it to the IPC. You can actually build it on the IPC, um, and then the node red flow editor. And it's re updating because it probably has more than one instance going, if I'm right. And 
I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to be smart here. Um, so my nodes are all over the place. I'm just working on one flow. And uh, just because I haven't been in node red for a couple days. And uh, um, just trying to be, just trying to make it like a, a real bag house. And the thing is, is that these writes have to be coordinated. Um, and then this was a manual toggle. And then I ended up doing the inject. What I was talking about with the um, with the toggle true, like the button on the red, it'll toggle true and it'll stay true. So then this right will stay at a one. And for simulation, you know, you gotta you you gotta do the full cycle, and it's very explicit as far as um, not going back to zero. So. This is setting my solenoids off, and so the payload, the value went to false, as opposed to here, the value is true. Um, so it's just, again, to create this, uh, this kind of cyclic pressure indication that you might see in a real system, so the, uh, and it's faster than, than what a real system would be just to just to play with the response and to demonstrate it. So anyway, um, I'm hoping to be able to get some simulation, which I don't know if I'm going to be able to do based on the limitations that I have. But what I want to do is be able to add on, well, I want to check out the oscilloscope. And then the, um, let's see if this will work right now. Probably won't, but it might, but I'm not sure. Symbols, maybe, ah, check it out. Let's see what it will do. And they're all there. Starts recording. Yeah, so this is the oscilloscope that is built in. It's another application for Rexraw, but I couldn't get it to work earlier, and these alarms are showing up. So, yeah, so there's something. Uh, it's not happy about something. So, I'll come back to that, get it going. Um, but, I mean, you can see. That's just another application. I mean, the, the the one example that I saw, I had like 20 applications on here. So, I mean, you can, there's a lot you can do with Control X Core. Um, and I suggest that you check it out. The, uh, the platform is pretty versatile. Um, I think you'll limit yourself if you call it a PLC. Um, you're welcome to do that if you want. And that's not how I'm looking at it. I uh, I think it's very much a uh, you know IPC in edge computer type application. It's not even an a box of applications because they all of these have their own um, widget, if you would, or own um, setting, and you can back them up. You can um, do the logons you can set it up any way you want so there's a lot of versatility going on here um and i haven't even gotten into the half of it um data layer is what i was alluding to earlier and you can see everything that's on your ipc here as far as in the data layer and you know so for diagnostics and controls um for the system you know like if you lost power if you lost you know, whatever. Uh, if you had a PLC failure, the all of it can be sent back to to whatever you know master maybe monitoring it or or however you want to look at it. So there's a uh, there's plenty plenty more to learn here, and I encourage you to get out and check out the Control X Core.